Hello, this is Claire, and today I'm going to be doing a very stereotypical YouTube type video. I'm going to be doing a haul video, but the thing I'm going to be hauling is plants. I spent this past weekend at the Tower Hill Botanic Garden in Boylston, Massachusetts at their Carnivorous Plants show. It's primarily run by the New England Carnivorous Plant Society, who are super rad, and I definitely recommend that you check them out. Peggy. She's gonna be loud, at least she can be on camera. Um, as I was saying, it's run by the New England Carnivorous Plant Society. They are really great. They're really into helping people grow carnivorous plants. And if you're in the New England area, you should also become a member because they're super great. I'll link them below. But anyway, it is an amazing show. It's tons and tons of amazing carnivorous plants all in one room. Some are for sale, including the ones I'm going to be showing you. And then people also bring show plants to compete with, which is really stellar. And there's lots of rare types, depending on what people bring out. So I, of course, couldn't resist and bought some carnivorous plants which I'm going to be running through right now. So this is one of the plants I actually already had. This is a Drosera, also known as a sundew, their little fly paper. This one is Drosera capensis crossed with something else that I will decode after I'm done filming and put in the description. It's a, I posted pictures of this guy on my Instagram, Drosera capensis, which I actually, doo -doo -doo, bought another one of this weekend. It's a baby one. It's little. Um, is one of the most common sundews for people to keep because it's very easy to take care of. It's pretty small. Um, it doesn't have to go dormant, which is something I'll talk about with some of the other plants. And yeah, basically it's pretty easy to take care of. So I showed you the first hybrid I got a couple months ago, the Juicera capensis I got this weekend. And then also a couple months ago, I got this gorgeous one, which is a Saracenia purpurea, which is a pitcher plant that's native to the United States in New England, specifically where I am living. And it's a low to the ground one, as you can see it kind of flares outwards. As I was mentioning with the Drosera, some carnivorous plants have to go dormant. This is one of them. This means that it's used to having winter, so it's going to die back and then wait for the spring to grow back in. If you're keeping plants, if it's something that can be outside, like this one hypothetically could because it is a native, um, if it's in the ground, it's just going to die back, do its thing. If you're keeping it inside, you need to keep it somewhere cool, but still keep it wet, somewhere like a fridge or even better, an unheated uh, garage, something like that. I'll be testing out keeping it probably in the fridge. We'll see how that goes. Peggy. Hush. All right, I just talked about Saracenia purpurea and this weekend I got a hybrid version of it. This one is Saracenia purpurea venosa red. I picked it because of its color. It's got these really gorgeous red pitchers. And if you haven't seen my videos about carnivorous plants or pitcher plants before, the pitchers are actually modified leaves and then they do flower like other flowering plants. This one will also have to be going dormant, so I'll be doing that adventure with this guy. All right, so I showed you two pitcher plants, which were both a Saracenia. This next one is a pitcher plant, but it is a different genus, and that is Nepenthes. So I got this little one at a discount because it doesn't actually have any pitchers on it right now, but I still think it's adorable. This is Nepenthes alata. I believe it's a tropical variety. If you know otherwise, please let me know in the, in the comments. I'm still a little bit of a newbie, so I'm still learning. Uh, so I believe this one doesn't have to go dormant, um, which is exciting. And I don't have any other Nepenthes. This is the only one I've got, so it's kind of my little test subject, which is why I didn't mind getting a tiny one. All right, and next I have everybody's favorite carnivorous plant. Let's be real, this is the fan favorite, and that is a Venus flytrap. It's my first one. Um, like the other ones, this one's gonna have to go dormant. The scientific name for this is Dianaea miscipula. If you don't already know, um, these guys feed by catching insects in their jaws of a sort. They're triggered by touch, and what's really amazing is that they're triggered by not just one touch, because then they might just close and use energy on closing on a raindrop, but they have to have three contacts on the little hairs on the inside within a certain amount of time for them to close, upping the chance that it's an insect, which they can then break down and take the nutrients out of. So it's my little Venus flytrap. All right, and last, I have a couple of Drosera's, AKA sundews, which are my personal favorite for carnivorous plants. I showed you a couple at the beginning. Drosera capensis, these ones are different ones, however. The first one is this tiny little red one, which is uh, Drosera natalensis. It's a subtropical sundew, according to my little label. Again, if you have any care tips, please throw those in the comments. I'll be doing some Googling to find out about things as well, but I just loved it because of the red color and it has really nice fleshy rosette leaves, which I really just think are really pretty. And then I also got myself 
I might be misremembering what the gentleman told me. I'm pretty sure this is Drosera filiformis, which is one of the native species of sundew around here. It's obviously very long and leggy, um, but it does have the same glands going up and down it. And it already has, from both the show and my house, some gnats that it's got stuck to it. Again, if you have any care tips, I know this one definitely does have to go dormant, so I'll be doing that. And then lastly, I might be the most excited about this one, just because it's adorable. Um, this, I'll be doing a close-up because it's tiny. Drosera tokaiensis, um, which is some kind of hybrid. I'll have to look up exactly what it is. The seeds were from Japan, and the woman that I purchased it from grew them herself. It's less than a year old, partially why it's so tiny. Um, according to the internet, I don't need to have it go dormant, though I'll keep an eye on it. I was told if it starts to wilt, it might be trying to go dormant. I'm excited to see this one as a kind of a little experiment, see if I can grow it bigger uh, and see how it does. All right, and there you have it. Those are the plants that I got at the Carnivorous Plant Show at Tower Hill. I'm really excited about seeing how they do. I keep mine under a fluorescent light setup since I don't get a lot of light where I live. I keep it on, I think, 12 hours. It's on a timer, so I don't even have to think about it. Most of these I'm keeping in a tray of distilled water. Uh, a lot of people don't recommend that you don't use tap water. It's not good for the plants. Um, with the exception of the Nepenthes, I'm just keeping that one well watered. And then, I just kind of let them go and check on them. The Drosera that I got a couple months ago seems really happy. It's already flowered. And then I'll be pulling a lot of them to have them go dormant pretty soon. If you have any questions, any tips, anything at all, please leave those for me in the comments. If you'd like me to do more videos like this, because I mean, I'm never opposed to acquiring more plants to do haul videos, please let me know. I do have another video particularly about Drosera's in the works since they are my favorite. And if you have any other videos you'd like to see, please do let me know. Hit the like button if you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe, it's super helpful. Thank you to all my Patreon patrons. If you're interested in becoming one, you can check out the link in the description. I will see you next week.